After the world comes to an end, a few survivors try to live by scavenging the earth of what remains of it. A special teenage girl finds herself as the hunting target of a group of marauders for the purpose of money and entertainment. With these people hot on her trail, her journey of survival begins. Two marauders chase a teenager named Molly in the desert. Simon, one of the men, catches her to stab her, but his ally tells him she can't be damaged. Molly fights for her life and stabs the second man before running away. Simon and successfully catches up to her but a powerful barrier appears, pushing him away. He stares at Molly with recognition, saying that she is the girl from the stories. He laughs crazily and runs away from her. Knowing the danger he can bring, Molly grabs her gun and shoots him down. Afterwards, she regains composure and summons her pet falcon. Meanwhile, at the Marauder's headquarters, a man and a woman beg Deacon, the Marauder boss, for food and medicine for their daughter. But the powerful man mocks them instead. With the boss's signal, two henchmen men appear behind them to inject a special medicine which only takes seconds to make the victim salivate green goo and growl at them. The boss insults them further saying it's a waste to use the medicine on lowly people. Back in the desert, Molly continues to scavenge the bunkers for anything she can use to survive and unfortunately ends up with little success. At the same time, Deacon starts inspecting the new supplicants for an underground entertainment fight. These supplicants are humans turned into beasts as a result of the special medicine. The boss gets impatient upon knowing that Simon only brought one human from the last looting. The assistant, Ogre, informs him that Simon isn't back yet, just in time for the beast in the cage to growl fiercely at the leader. Deacon finds it fascinating, since this new supplicant may be a good fighter. After a while, lights illuminate the fighting arena and people arrive to watch the show, including a man named Earl. Instead of feeling excited, some of the audience gossip about the special girl's existence and that she's seen near the old bunkers. Deacon hypes the audience by introducing the new supplicant, Roger, to fight his very own supplicant, The Truth, who has been unbeatable ever since. People cheer more as the betting begins. The Truth is released from his cage and instantly throws Roger and reaps its body. The boss becomes disappointed with such an unentertaining fight. With this, he challenges other supplicants to fight his beast. Earl steps forward to volunteer with his supplicant, Bob, who is in the form of an old man. Deacon mocks both of them while Earl remains calm. As the fight begins, The Truth has the upper hand due to its strength and size. The marauders playfully discuss the next form of supplicant they're going to create, assured that they'll win. Surprisingly, Bob fights back smartly by using a spiked signboard that it saw on the wall. The supplicant drops the sign on the ground as the truth continues the chase. The beast steps on the spiked signboard and becomes distracted. Bob takes the chance and breaks its enemy's neck. The marauders, including the boss, are speechless in disbelief while Earl suppresses his smirk. In the end, the boss doesn't have a choice but to announce their loss. He walks out by giving a command to capture the winners. Meanwhile, Molly dreams of her past. When she was strapped to a hospital bed as a doctor tried to insert something in her head before suddenly awakening, she then resumes her day looking for food, equipped with a bow and arrow. This time, she successfully hunts a goose for food and shares it with her falcon. She goes to a lake to clean herself when a female supplicant comes to attack her from behind. The two fight viciously and Molly is losing badly. She tries to grab her things for her weapons but she's dragged back to the lake. She grabs a rock and hits the attacker many times before running to get her weapons. As soon as she holds holds her dagger, the supplicant holds her and another barrier appears, taking the beast aback for a few seconds. The attacker grabs Molly and throws her in another direction, making her cut her own stomach with the dagger she's holding. Molly screams in pain but she has to move, so she grabs a bear trap among her things and opens it just in time for her to use when the female supplicant charges again. The smart girl escapes death by a thread. Back in the desert, the marauders, led by Fifth Wheel, find Simon's body and discovers that he's shot. They become very interested in pursuing a scavenger with a rare gun. The next day, Molly dreams of when a doctor tests her shielding powers until she wakes up from her nightmare. She struggles to get up due to her wound but pushes herself to move for her own safety. She resumes trudging armed with a bow and arrow until she sees a small makeshift house. She scans the place for any danger when a small figure appears. It's a girl named Bailey who tries to growl at Molly, pretending to be a supplicant to scare her away. Molly realizes that the child poses no threat and asks her for help. Bailey looks intently at Molly from head to toe and invites her in. In the house, Molly sews her wound while the little girl watches. To break the ice, Molly strikes a conversation with Bailey but she refuses to answer. Eventually, the girl shares about her parents leaving to get some food. As the conversation ends, Molly asks Bailey for food and the little one denies having any. But when the teenager starts to leave, Bailey feels guilty and offers a can of food. Molly gratefully eats the food as Bailey silently watches. After a few spoonfuls, the teenager gives Bailey the food and resumes the conversation
conversation to get to know each other. The little girl starts warming up to her while pointing out that her parents will definitely be back as she shares the food with Molly. Afterwards, she spots the teenager's bag and opens it out of curiosity. Feeling indebted, the older girl gets her with a tiny stuffed animal. Because of this, Bailey decides to let Molly stay for the night. The teenager has a nightmare again where she escaped a facility with a gun, fearful of her surroundings. She suddenly awakens when her falcon screeches to give a warning and she immediately gets out of the house. She scans the area and spots five marauders coming their way. She runs to the house and sees Bailey stepping out to ask what's happening. The teenager tells Bailey to get in and hide and before the marauders come near, Molly successfully shoots one of them down. Unfortunately, she is outnumbered and she struggles fighting three big marauders who attack simultaneously. Meanwhile, Bailey shakes in fear inside the house as she hugs her toys. One marauder comes to catch Bailey and the little one desperately crawls away from him while screaming in fear. Outside of the house, Molly faces Wheel in a one-on-one -on -one battle and as she hears Bailey's screams, she becomes more determined to fight him. She grabs her dagger and slashes her enemy repeatedly, enough to make the man stand back. Then, Molly looks back at Bailey's direction and she sees the marauder about to attack, so she creates a power sphere in her hand and hits the marauder with it. The man flies away from Bailey but Wheel witnesses everything, realizing Molly is the special girl. The teenager rushes to escape with Bailey but the child struggles, not wanting to leave because of her parents. Despite explaining the danger there is, Bailey remains stubborn, so Molly carries her forcefully away. Back in the headquarters, Deacon and his trusted marauders, Kim, Margaret, and Ogre, face Earl privately. The leader grows upset while hearing Margaret's report of their losses in the fight with Bob. What annoys him the most is that Bob looks like an old uncle. He blames Ogre for the loss and Margaret suggests using underhanded strategies to beat Bob but Kim opposes, saying they'll seem weak. Earl, on the other hand, remains composed and observant. In the middle of the argument, Wheel arrives and excitedly reports about Molly. He testifies on how strong the special girl is and that the stories are true. She has powers. The women in the room contradicts Wheel saying it's impossible but Deacon testifies that he's seen her once before. The leader becomes more thrilled and grabs Wheel by the neck to make him talk more. He blabbers about Molly being injured and that she's with a child wearing a dinosaur suit and that the teenager is very protective of her. Upon realizing that Molly is real, Kim immediately mentions that they need her. But Augur suddenly interjects the conversation, misinterpreting that she's talking about the child. Deacon releases Wheel and points a gun at Ogre's head, clarifying it's Molly they need, not the child. Kim volunteers to capture Molly by using the child as bait to make the special girl come to them voluntarily instead, but Wheel insists he has to do the job. With this, Deacon loses patience and orders his henchmen to supplicate Wheel so that Bob can have a challenging opponent while they wait. Ogre shows reluctance in this command, but he remains silent. The boss further tells his henchmen to imprison Earl for now. Afterwards, Kim and her team start the hunt for Molly. They arrive at the child's home, but it's empty. She commands her team to burn the house down and scans the area. In seconds, she figures out the direction Molly and Bailey took. The marauders enter the forest, just in time for Molly and Bailey to pause and hide. The teenager covers the child's mouth to remain quiet, but the sharp Kim discovers their direction and orders a marauder to fire a smoke bomb where the two girls are. Bailey can't help but cuff, which gives away their exact location, so Molly shoots Kim as soon as she spots her, but the woman removes the arrow nonchalantly. At the same time, Bailey grabs Molly's bag and runs away. Molly prepares her last bow and ties it to a rope so that she can easily retrieve and reuse it. She brings down two marauders with it, but when Kim reaches her, no weapon is effective against her strength, so Molly runs away. She catches up to Bailey, but their pursuers are coming closer, so she grabs her bag and throws it to them to buy some time. Two marauders suddenly intercept them and during the fight, Molly's eyeglasses fall off, making her vision blurred. The teenager feels frustrated by this but Bailey grabs her hand to lead the escape. They don't have time to rest as another marauder attacks them. Molly tells Bailey to retrieve her eyeglasses and the child obeys. Unable to see clearly, the teenager struggles in fighting the marauder. Meanwhile, Bailey finds the eyeglasses and hurries back to Molly. However, she becomes lost and calls her companion for help. Molly hears Bailey's calls, but due to her inability to see and the smoke bombs, she trips and falls. While the child continues to cry for help, Molly gets surrounded by the marauders. They tie both of her hands and she falls to the ground. Luckily, she lands on the spot where her eyeglasses are. As she tries to escape, her falcon distracts the marauders, so Molly stands up and fights back again. A female marauder shoots her with a smoke bomb in close proximity, but she creates a barrier to protect herself. In a blink of an eye, a marauder catches the falcon and breaks its neck in front of Molly, and she screams in despair, making all of the marauders surrounding her drop dead to the ground. She wears her eyeglasses and searches for Bailey, but the child is nowhere to be found.
ground. Molly screams in anguish, releasing her powers, producing a crater on the ground. Afterward, she buries her falcon and prepares herself to rescue Bailey. Molly then rides a boat to the Marauder headquarters. She enters the enemy base and is welcomed by a group of men whom she easily defeats except one who escapes. Meanwhile, in Deacon's office, Ogre gives him an update about Molly coming, but gets interrupted when the Marauder who escapes from the teenager reports that they're already under attack. Deacon gets surprised while Bailey, who sits in front of him, cheekily threatens him of Molly's existence. The leader becomes more annoyed at Bailey and orders his people to silence the child, but no one can do so. Kim and Ogre argue instead, making Deacon explode in anger and commands everyone to stop Molly. All marauders scramble to look for the teenager while warning each other of her ability to read and control minds. Soon, Molly fights marauders anywhere she goes, but no one can stand in her way. Meanwhile, the prisoners, including Earl, are alarmed by the commotion. He takes the chance to escape with the others by tricking the guard. Earl informs the prisoners of Deacon's plan to supplicate Molly, so they all arm themselves to kill the young woman with superpowers before it's too late. With Molly openly using her powers and the prisoners armed with guns, shooting and explosions are heard in Deacon's office. The cowardly leader tries to escape while Ogre brings Bailey with them and Kim stays behind. The warrior marauder scans the place for Molly and she appears. They begin their intense battle, with Kim's fighting skills as a huge advantage. Molly's big dagger doesn't stand a chance against Kim's robotic arm. She continues throwing the younger girl in all directions without remorse. Kim flings Molly to the hall and for the first time, a glimpse of emotion appears on her face upon seeing the dead bodies of her allies. Hot for revenge, she charges towards Molly and the girl escapes to the next room. She uses the door to block the woman and takes the chance to destroy her enemy's robotic arm. Molly soon realizes that losing the robotic arm is nothing for the female warrior. Kim pushes her off the balcony and Molly's leg gets tangled to a chain. To make things worse, she finds herself hanging in the middle of the supplicant's den. Upon seeing the teenager, the supplicants start to attack. Eventually, the smart girl breaks free and looks for a way out, but it's a dead end. She doesn't have a choice but to enter an empty supplicant cage to protect herself. As the beasts aggressively fight with each other, Bob finds an opportunity to escape by climbing out while the other beasts follow. Shortly after, Bob locates Deacon and instantly attacks him. The leader commands Ogre to shoot the supplicant but he refuses and steps out of the room. Unfortunately, other supplicants attack the assistant relentlessly. As Deacon screams in frustration while fighting off Bob, Wheel, who is now a supplicant, comes to the room to join the attack. The boss fights two strong beasts, and Bailey takes the chance to escape. Meanwhile, with the supplicants out of the den, Molly is able to exit the cage just to resume fighting both supplicants and marauders. Soon after, she flees to a vacant room to inspect her wound, but she hears a thump and Margaret steps out of her hiding place. Molly approaches her and asks Bailey's location. The woman tells her that the child is on another floor upstairs and pleads for her life. However, it's all in vain and Molly stabs her. Afterwards, the teenager goes upstairs but encounters Kim again and they resume fighting. Molly, more determined than ever, finishes Kim with three headbutts. Then, the teenager trudges to the room to look for Bailey, but Deacon, who surprisingly survives, sneaks on her back with a dagger. Molly, who is in a weakened state, punches the man, making him step back to where Kim is. The warrior holds Deacon's leg to stop him in pursuing Molly, but the crazy leader shoots her instead. Without any guilt, he faces Molly, informing her of how rich she would make him. Molly screams in anger, releasing her power. However, this doesn't stop the demented marauder. The two continue to wrestle until they reach the balcony of the fighting arena where supplicants are waiting below. The teenager is now half-conscious due to her injuries, and Deacon uses the time to give a fanatical speech, pretending to host a supplicant fight with him as the winner. Molly gathers her remaining powers to blast Deacon off the edge of the balcony and she succeeds. The deranged man falls headfirst in the supplicant's den and becomes their feast. With sheer persistence, Molly stands up and drags herself out of the room. Before leaving, she sees Bailey's parents who are now supplicants and she decides to end their suffering with her bullets. She proceeds to the upper floor, and at last, she finds Bailey standing in the hall. Now safe and sound, the two hug each other in relief. After the extreme encounter, a man in a dark suit walks calmly in the middle of the supplicant den. He's assisted by other men wearing laboratory suits. After a while, a barefooted teenager in a hospital gown comes in and touches Deacon's head. She sees a vision of Molly using her powers and informs the man in the suit that the teenager was here. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.